The two other DJs that we got to mention when we talk about this and, and their name will come up more is Africa and Bambada, who you'll see in the hip hop years. Um, he's a former warlord in the Black Spades. Um, he's one of, you know, considered one of the pillars of hip hop, the three pillars uh, in terms of DJs, him, um, Herc, and Grandmaster Flash. Um, you know, Bam started the Zulu Nation, Universal Zulu Nation, a community group. Um, you know, an activist group, a social group. He was known as the godfather of hip-hop and the master of records. And the reason why was, like, Bambada was, like, you know, whereas Herc would find, like, the raw soul stuff, the more funky stuff, like, Bam was, like, pulling out, like, you know, Rolling Stones records, uh, the Pink Panther theme, you know. He was pulling out soundtracks. Like, he was going all into all sorts of crazy stuff. Um... He was also the first DJ, and this is real important. You'll see this in the hip hop years if you if you watch a little bit more. Um, you know, he was one of the first to play in the um, the downtown new wave and punk scene. So Bronx is considered uptown, um, uptown boogie down Bronx, um, and then downtown is like Manhattan. So in Manhattan, you had primarily the white new wave, post punk, punk scene. Um, and Bam was one of the first DJs to get kind of accepted in that and have like the Zulu Nation and the New Wave punk heads kind of come together and and kind of figure out like, yo, we look mad different. Um, you know, some of us have mohawks, some, you know, some of us are rocking like, you know, a sweatsuit, whatever, right? We have our own very different styles, but like we're like young people who are rejecting mainstream society in so many ways and we have more in common beyond our race so uh, Bam was the first to kind of get accepted into that Jazzy Jazzy J um, etc and we'll talk more about that he was also the first to call DJing MCing breaking and writing hip-hop kind of put it you know he's he's credited with that now the thing about Bambata is he's become a complicated person right he um was accused several years ago of um in the 70s you know um sexually abusing young young boys you know young hip-hop um heads and you know it really kind of got ugly because you had all these people defending him uh, krs1 you know whoever like defending him saying oh what you know like it's Bambata, he did this and that, but like, you know, he also like, look what else he did, you know, so he's a very complicated figure in in that. Um, and while that, you know, we can't erase that, that, that can't go away, um, you know, as a young teenager, he also had, you know, major contributions to hip hop culture, but he's a problematic figure within it, you know, in the Zulu Nation, had years before uh, these allegations come out, kind of like pushed him aside mostly. Um, he was, he, but he was still like the brand ambassador, most commonly um, associated with the group. But he's an important one to know. And then Grandmaster Flash, you got to know Flash. We'll have a, a whole unit on DJ music. I'll show you all Flash's techniques. But he's really the main innovator. He took what Herc did, the merry-go-round, and he put it on steroids and he brought it to the next level of musicality. He was an inventor and pioneer styles and he also was one of the first to like give names to all of his techniques and have like a whole theory of DJing. Um, he also was really good um, at um, manipulating technology, not just as a DJ, but he went to um, you know, vocational school for electronics. So he was able to figure out how to get uh, mixers and stuff to do some different things and kind of pioneer some different ways of using a headphone cue, um, etc. He was the first to do stuff on time too, really on time, to cut two records of, let's say, the same drum break and do it on time, where Herc would play it and play it back to back and it was offbeat and, and not in time. Um, you know, Flash would be play one record on one side, boom, to cat, to boom, cat, to the boom, to cat, the boom, cat, and switch it over to the same record on the other side, right on time, boom, to cat, the boom, cat, boom, the cat, the boom, cat, book a boom, the cat, ba boom, the cat, ba boom, the cat, the boom, cat, book a boom, the cat, you know, just like like that. 
um, right on time. Um, you know, so he's real important, you know, in, in, that, in that respect. Um, so that will bring us to the Hip Hop Years Part 1. And we'll watch like the first, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes of this film. I want you to think um, about these few questions as we go into it. Okay, so how was hip hop also anti-disco? So how was it, how did it adapt some things from disco as I sort of talked about, but how was it anti-disco as presented in this film? Uh, what's the Zulu Nation? Why didn't DJs let other DJs know the beats? I kind of talked about this, but you know, what does Herc say about it? What does Grandmaster Kaz say about it? Um, yeah, beyond like having the exclusive beats or the loud sound system, how did like DJ battles grow to have like skills, like skill based assessment? Um, and then think about the evolution of 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 MC in hip hop and hip hop. Excuse me. So we'll get into a little bit of rappers delight. We'll look a little bit at Blondie's Rapture, um, you know, which was one of the first songs played on MTV with a music video that had rapping in it. Um, although Rapper's Delight was the biggest, you know, rap single, um, you know, it wasn't played on, on MTV. Um, and it also wasn't, you know, uh, uh, Big Bang Hank and the, and the dudes and, and, and Sugar Hill Gang were, were, were black dudes. You know, Blondie, uh, De Deborah Harris, and, you know, it was white. So it also like spreaded the concept of rapping um, you know, uh, to white audience members. And you'll hear Fab Five Freddy talk about it um, and Flash talk about about uh, Blondie's Rapture. Um, but just kind of look at this as we kind of like summate all the things we talked about, but from the perspectives of some of, um, you know, some of the members. Now, I like this documentary. It's cool. If you really, like, really are like, all right, like, you know, want more of this stuff, um, I really suggest uh, uh, Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix. Um, it's kind of fucking crazy. Uh, I've been teaching this class for a minute, and after like the third time I taught the class is when the first episodes of Hip Hop Evolution started dropping, and students were like, dude, it's like your class. <laughs> so that could be a really good compliment to this class. Um, Cause we're gonna do like a unit on like Pete Rock and Large Professor, and literally in Hip Hop Evolution, they fucking go to Large Pro's house and he starts showing like beat making technique, you know. So, um, yeah, if you're looking for more, you know, um, and you're not screen burnt out, I highly recommend Hip Hop Evolution on Netflix, and it goes into all these other um, topics like you know Southern rap, uh, gangster rap, all, all that stuff. So it does it does flow well with this class. But um, anyways, enjoy the hip hop years. Watch at least the first 35, 40 minutes, um, and and you know watch more if you're feeling inspired. Um, and then yeah, next class we will check in and we will be talking about disco rap. All right. So how did we go from MCing and DJs to you know 14 minute long uh, rap records. How did we get from park jams, live improvisational, you know, um, jams, you know, essentially shows for people um, to trying to put that onto a piece of plastic and sell it to people. But uh, anyways, enjoy the film. I'll check you on the flip. Uh, keep yourselves healthy, wealthy, and uh, feeling good out there. All right.